Thank you, Brother Sean, for those songs. What a gift that songs are to us, huh? And uh, I just have seen so many times where songs lead us in a, uh, in a, uh, in a worship that, uh, in ways that, that we don't uh, experience otherwise. And so appreciate those, those songs. Well, tonight we have another uh, top topic that uh, is uh, before us, the coin of confidence. And um, Brother Lonnie has consented to share with us tonight on this. But just a few thoughts before we uh, have him come up. I'm sure all of us at one point or another have faced situations where we can boost, or where, where we can use a boost of confidence in uh, situations that we find ourselves in that leave us uh, wandering and, and uh, just in our responsibilities. I'm sure all of us have faced difficult situations that uh, call, of, call for us to lean into a certain situation that's looming in front of us. And uh, in our hearts, we want to run. We want to go there. We want to do like Jonah did, run the other direction. And yet we, uh, we know that we are called to engage. And I'm sure you know what I'm talking about. Many years ago, my, uh, my grandmother, a uh, godly woman, lived to be 91 years old. Um, most people in church just called her grandma. And uh, she was the the first uh, charismatic uh, Anabaptist woman that I got to know. She was very, quite often, she would be raising her hands as we would be singing in, in, in church. But uh, she was a mother of 12 and had weathered a lot of storms. Uh, several of her boys had uh, turned their backs on God and everything that they'd been taught, and, and uh, several of them would have uh, claimed to, uh, to be atheists. And I saw that woman pray for her, her children, her boys especially, and pray for years and years and years. And uh, while not all of them responded to the gospel, a few of them did. But when I was young, um, and uh, we were living up north at the time, she moved in with my, my, my parents. And so every time we'd come back from Canada and, and visit my folks, why, of course, Grandma was there. And, of course, after all the hugs and the things settled down after the initial um, greetings, and uh, I'd go over to her and I'd say, well, Grandma, how's it going? And uh, she'd uh, look at me and say, well, James, and then she'd break out in a song. She'd say, it's not an easy road. We are traveling to glory, for many are the thorns on the way. Mm. And I'd look at her and say, Grandma in my young, cocky, immature age. I'd say, Grandma, you're forgetting the main part of the song. The chorus says, but Jesus walks beside us and brightens the journey and lightens the heavy load. And Grandma, in her wisdom, would say, you'll see, James, you'll see. <laughs> and it turns out Grandma was right. Yeah, I have faced things that I never figured I'd face. And there are times that I wanted to run. It just happened last week. And, um, you know, we faced things that, that aren't easy to hear. <laughs> and I really appreciate the messages today. It really touched my heart. There's a, uh, there's a, a, a story in the book of Judges that is chronicled, that chronicles a, 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 a story of a, of a pastor shepherd. And uh, I don't know if you can think of who that might be, but it's Gideon. And I'd like to just take you back to the story of Gideon for a little bit here, just in a couple thoughts before we have Lonnie come up. Gideon had living, was living in an era of, of time when uh, Israel had once again turned their hearts away from God. <laughs> And the Midianites came, and we know what those Midianites are, don't we, in our lives. And they, came and they camped in Israel for seven years, it says. And they literally plundered the land. They took 
It says they destroyed their, their crops, their produce, so that even the ox and the cattle and the donkeys didn't have food to eat. They were, they were in bad shape. Israel was greatly impoverished. And of course, the Israelites cried out to the Lord like they, like they often would when they'd get into trouble, and they cried out to the Lord for help. And, uh, and it says that the angel of the Lord came to Gideon one day. And the first words out of the angel's mouth was, The Lord is with you, you mighty man of valor. And uh, it's found in Judges 6, if you want to just uh, look in your Bibles there. And, and Gideon gives the angel of the Lord a, a very logical response. <laughs> he says, well, if, if, if the Lord is with us, then why is all this stuff happening to us? Why are we facing this difficulty? And um, the encounter kicks off a series of conversations that Gideon and, and the angel have with each other. And uh, the angel of the Lord reminded him why it's, why, uh, why, why it's a good idea for him. He, of course, the angel tells him that he's going to be responsible for, for delivering Israel. And, of course, Gideon can't, he, he can't see into that. He says, I, I'm the least in my, in my father's house. We're the least in the clan of Manasseh. And, um, and, and I can't do that. And, um, and by the way, it says that the, Midian, the Midianites... Uh, and the Amalekites and the people of the east gathered around them. In, in, in verse 12 of chapter 7, it says that they were as numerous as the locusts, and their camels were without number, uh, as by the sa uh, sands by the seashore. And uh, so, I don't know how big this army was, but I'm sure they felt completely overwhelmed. I'm sure Israel, I'm sure Gideon felt overwhelmed. And to think that he was called to deliver them. And uh, so, after a bit of discussion, um, the angel tells him, the Spirit of the Lord is upon you. And that's one of the things I just want to remind you, <laughs> that the Spirit of the Lord is with you. And those times that we need that confidence, and we need that courage, and, and we face those, those tough situations in our lives, I, I just have to remind myself of who I am in Christ alone. <laughs> it's not about me. It's not about my church. It's, not, it's about Jesus Christ. And the Spirit of the Lord is with me. And um, so Gideon calls for the men of Manasseh. He calls for Asher and Zebulun and Naphtali, all the men. They gather together. It's about 22,000 or 32,000 of them. And uh, God wants to dwindle the army a little bit. It's too many people to come against this vast host of Midianites. And so he, he, he takes care of all the people that were afraid. He said, all those that are afraid or are fearful, uh, you step to the side. And there were 22,000, about two-thirds of the, over two-thirds of the army stepped aside. And, um, and 10,000 remain. And... Um, God still thinks it's too big of an army, so he does the water t lapping test, and he tells Gideon to take him down to the, to the water's edge there. And all those that would just bend over and, and, and cup their, their hands and, and drink out of their hands uh, were supposed to go to one side, and all those that got down on their knees and lapped water uh, like a dog, it says, uh, were supposed to go to the other side. And all that remained was 300 men. And, of course, now finally God had the sides even, right? And uh, there was 300 of them. And um, there's an indication that Gideon was, was, was afraid, that he was really afraid. Uh, in, verse, in verse 9, 10, and 11 of chapter 7, it says that, it says that uh, uh, the angel instructed Gideon to go down to the camp. And he said... If you're afraid, then take your servant with you, and he can go with you down to the camp. Because I want to give you a message when you go down there to the camp. And then it says, the next verse says that, that Gideon took his, his servant with him. So that's an indication that he was afraid. And they went down to the camp. And there he heard someone from the, uh, from the Midianites or from the opposing army talking about a dream that they had. 
And there was this barley loaf, right, that came rolling down, and it, it, it crashed into the tent, and it destroyed the tent. It turned the tent upside down. And the other person that was hit, listening to the dream, he was hit, the one guy was telling his dream that he had, and it was this barley loaf, and, and the other person said, well, he said, that means that, means that, that that's Gideon, that's Gideon and, and, and the Israelite army coming against us. And it says that when Gideon heard the interpretation of that dream, that his heart was strengthened. And, uh, and, 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 he, and he, it says that his, he, he worshipped. In verse 15 of chapter 7, I want to read that. It says, And so it was when Gideon heard the telling of the dream and its interpretation that he worshipped. Isn't that neat? That he worshipped. And I can, I can attest to this. I've, I've done it, not often enough. But there are times when I, when I face situations and it just looks so big in front of me and it keeps me awake at night and I'm, I'm trying to figure out how this is going to work out. You know, if I, if I lay all that aside and, and, and focus on Jesus Christ as we were instructed to do today, if I, if I start focusing on him and who he is and reminding myself that the spirit of the Lord is with me, it just looks different. It looks different. And worshiping him. And I, it's just the, the, as I was thinking about this, is in this point of confidence, we find our confidence in Jesus Christ. The, um, the armies, the Midianites, as it were, that we face in our lives, the Amalekites, the Midianites, and the Mennonites, um, <laughs> It's Jesus Christ that will keep us going and keep us strengthened, and we worship him. Brother Lonnie, would you come up? just want to remind you that uh, as much as possible, avoid the center aisle because these sessions are being recorded, and uh, it'll free from distraction that way. Let me pray with you. Father, thank you so much for this, this opportunity of being here tonight again. Lord, as we hear your instruction, open our hearts to receive. Bless Brother Lonnie as he shares the word that he received from you. We pray this in your name. Amen. Bless you, brother.